little shovel or anything like that on that shovel. It was really square. And I just want to be able to show you the reach and the height of the 995. Now it isn't going to perfectly center, but in the event that our shovel went down or it's down for a PM and I need to continue rolling my trucks, I can still load that truck at a fairly low cost of time until my shovel comes down. I don't have to park all my trucks, don't have to send my operators home, and I can also take advantage of the mobility of that machine to be able to move quickly around my mining operation to go in and cover for those hydraulic machines and those electric machines that don't have the ability to move around there as much. So at this point, I want to I want to bring in a friend of mine. Clayton's here, and Clayton has spent a lot of time commissioning autonomous haulage fleets on mining sites around the world. And not only has he commissioned it, but he's actually stayed there and run the sites with the mining operation. Clayton, let's, uh, let's take the autonomous truck journey. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Howdy, folks. I'm Clayton Ockley. I'm a business development manager for Command Darwin here in the U.S. Uh, Caterpillar unveiled our first autonomous mining truck at my Expo back in 1996, and Kent was there for that one. By 2013, we had our first autonomous knowledge solution running in Western Australia. And since then, we got a global fleet of over 650 trucks that have hauled 8.3 billion metric tons and safely traveled over 300 million kilometers. Now, similar to your developers and your other equipment, the flashing green lights, what that means is that is in a staff mode or a manual mode. When those flip to solid blue and then up to the flashing blue, that's going to indicate that it's going through a mode change. Out, and there's no longer an oper operator on board around that machine. Those blue lights tie into our safety bolts that we take to each of our autonomous mindsets, right? So the command for hauling, we have five golden rules. First rule being minimize interaction. If somebody doesn't need to be in your mining area, don't let them in. That's why we got this barrier here. I don't know how Kent got outside of it, but that's why we got this barrier here. Because y'all will find where you're at, but you don't need to be down there, right? Golden rule number two, going to be keeping it real. So you want to make sure that the virtual world you're building is our safety board that we take to each of our autonomous mindsets, right? So the command for hauling, we have five golden rules. First rule being minimize interactions. If somebody doesn't need to be in your mining area, don't let them in. That's why we got this barrier here. I don't know how Kent got outside of it, but that's why we got this barrier here. Because y'all are fine where you're at, but you don't need to be down there, right? Golden rule number two is going to be keeping it real. So you want to make sure that the virtual the world you're building for these autonomous movement after a boat change, this truck's going to do a system check, including a brake check. This is going to save, we don't want to have an operator doing this at the start of the shift, right? So this is going to save you time at your fueling, it's going to save you time at your inspections, uh, and it's going to be one less thing you have to worry about throughout your shift. So Jared was actually on the D9. He got on the D11 a few minutes ago. He's now going to take himself off of the tractor and he's going to go remote. So he's going to do the first run of the command that we offer, which is like He's going to operate from a console that looks just like that. You see, he walked back to the river. He switched it off to RC. The blue light came on. He's going to walk back out from behind that screen with his console. He can do everything now from that console that he's able to do set in the seat of that tractor. Maybe you got a two or three hour really unsafe area that I don't want to put it up there. You can put it in that with that console to get through that little task and you put it back in the seat. Kent, we're talking a lot about why what's going on on that D11 up there. So Jared was actually on the D9. He got on the D11 a few minutes ago. And he's now going to take himself off of the tractor and he's going to go remote. So he's going to do the first level of command that we offer, which is right on the side. He's going to operate from the console that looks just like that. You see, he walked back to the river, he switched it off to RC, the blue light came on, he's going to walk back out from behind that screen with his console. He can do everything now from that console that he's able to do sitting in the seat of that tractor. Maybe you got a two or three hour really unsafe area that I don't want to put an operator in. You can put him in that with that console to get through that little task and then put him back in the seat. We're going to talk about the next layer here in just a little bit. Thanks, Ken. 
Uh, so back to our buckets, we talked a little bit about safety here. Now one of the areas we're really focusing on is inclement weather, right? So we're not going to find a lot of that here, but at your mine sites, as, as conditions start to deteriorate, get rain, sleet, snow, these trucks are going to start talking to each other, right? And if one goes through a corner, gets a little loose, slips a little bit, it's going to tell the truck behind it, hey, let's take our little side to this corner. And they're going to do that until they find the optimum speed for your condition. Alternatively, when the sun comes out, the road dries out, both trucks are going to work together in those problem areas, get your speed right back up until you're at full capacity. Oh, and another thing about safety is we like to teach our trucks to drive defensively. Much like